Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the 2022 midterm elections and the generic ballot polling. So, before we get started with this video, please leave a like, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Again, only about a third of my viewers that watch my videos generally are subscribed, so it would mean a lot if you hit that button. Uh, trying to get to 6k before the election, uh, so it would be great if you could help me out because, you know, it encourages me to keep putting out content for you guys and it's really helpful to me as the creator, so please do that. Now, that being said, I think uh, we can start the video now. So this is going to be a video mostly talking about this assumption that's been going around, you know, whether it's on Twitter, YouTube, or the general news, uh, the media and whatnot. It's that there will be a Labor Day surge or bump for the Republican Party. And this is mostly comes from, in what I would say, antiquated theory from that may might have relevant 20, 30 years ago about how the party trailing in the polls will generally gain around Labor Day. And it's the, the logic of the theory is that people start paying attention around Labor Day. They can create a lot of volatility in the polling, and it will create a lot of um, upside for the party that might be losing before Labor Day. And that, like, I don't want to, you know, I'm, I'm not going to pull out every single midterm dating back to 1990 because, A, I don't think they have data for, every, you know, the generic ballot polls at that time. And B, it's not relevant because comparing this midterm to midterms in the 90s is a fool's errand. And so instead, what we'll be doing is looking at midterms since to, or at elections since 2010. So that's you know 2010 midterms, 2012 election, 2014 midterms, 2016 general election, 2018 midterms, 2020 general election, and of course, the 2022 midterms. And so the purpose of that is just to see, is there going to be a Labor Day bump this year? Is there going to be one or were there ones in the past? And what does this all mean and what can we expect where can we expect the polls to move in these coming weeks? So that's what today's video will be talking about. And um, I think it's important to note that like, th like this is a very close election. And when you go back to other midterm elections and other general elections, the generic ballot polls, the leads are a lot bigger. And the Democrats are literally only up one point right now. It is quite literally about as close as it gets. So when I say the Democrats have a lead right now, it does not mean I'm projecting a landslide for the Democrats. It doesn't even mean that I think that they're in that good of a position, really. But they're leading in the generic ballot polling. And that's what we're basing off of. Another note is that I use RCP for most of these elections, but I used 538 for 2018 and 2020 because that's when they started doing this tracker. But yeah, I generally prefer 538. RCP is very selective with the polls they use mostly because they are, it's a site run by pretty partisan Republicans and they sometimes just throw out polls. They're good for Democrats to make their average look a little better for the GOP. So again, not to slander RCP. I think they're useful in some cases. Uh, I used them a lot back in 2020 because I was betting on a bigger polling miss. But this year, um, I think the poll is going to be a little better. Although, again, there will be some polling misses. But let's just talk about uh, these midterms. So this theory mostly is, you know, the year that it, that most people use to back up this theory is 2014. And so in 2014, what, what we saw was a red wave midterm. The Republicans picked up, I, I, I think, nine Senate seat or eight Senate seats, and they won the generic battle by 6%, which... Uh, very, very good. It's comparable to the Democrats winning it by eight and a half in 2018. But the thing you have to remember is that there, there's higher upside for Democrats nationwide. So an eight, like an 8.6% win for Democrats is arguably a bit less impressive than a six point win nationwide for Republicans because the nation is more, a, a bit more democratic as a whole. So the, like the mean outcome of an election would probably be Democrats plus two. So Republicans have a bit lower of a ceiling. So when they win by six is kind of like when the Democrats win by eight. But that's just, you know, again, I just wanted to put that in perspective for those who weren't really familiar with 2014. But 2014 was a big red wave. And what we saw was that for a while, the polls actually didn't show that. The polls, uh, you know, even as, as as late as November of 2013 showed Democrats doing quite well nationwide. And, you know, they had a lead for, you know, all of 2013 really in the polls until December. And so let's talk about elections easing. So starting at the beginning of the summer, you know, late May, early June, Democrats had a narrow lead. It you know went back and forth between a one, two, three point lead, and then they started to surge in the summer. In July, they actually held a decent lead heading into August. They looked pretty good, but they just right right when you know this time twenty fourteen hit collapsed. Last day they held the lead was September sixth. They had half a point ahead. Then you know next week the Republicans just surged and they never relinquished that lead. And so ultimately, what we saw was that the Democratic Party just really had a hard time after Labor Day. And so people say, oh, well, look, well, look at that date, Labor Day. Hmm. I wonder why that happened. And ultimately, what, the real reason that the Democrats got smoked in 2014, why the polls moved away from them after Labor Day, was mostly because 
they stayed, you know, they were at what 42.5 on September 6th and they were at 43.2 on election day. They like kind of their vote share stayed pretty stagnant. But what we saw was that the Republicans who were at 42 on that day went up to, you know, almost 46%. So uh, Republican surge, Democrats had no energy, no momentum, no galvanizing, you know, issue, no turnout really operate, you know, that Democrats were really just deflated and really um, apathetic, I guess you could say. And that's what really killed them in 2014. And it's like, you know, again, 2014 actually wasn't like a ton of like uh, Obama voters from 2012 switching over to the Republicans. It was mostly just Democrats didn't really turn out and Republicans were a lot more energized and they voted while Democrats didn't. And ultimately we saw electorates that were a lot more Republican than 2012. So um, that's really what happened in 2014. Again, 2014, I, I think it's just a generic wave midterm. It wasn't anything super special. There wasn't like this big October surprise or this big, you know, issue it was mostly that Obama wasn't super popular and the Republicans had the momentum and they won, right? So 2022 is a lot different, obviously, because Dobbs, uh, Biden, you know, again, Biden, Obama had pretty similar proof ratings at this time, but Obama had downward momentum. Biden has upwards, uh, upward momentum, right? Because he's gained 10% in the past two months. He, you know, he like, Bi Biden has ironically enough become like a bit more popular now, you know, you know, because like the dark Brandon stuff, his legislative accomplishments have really been, you know, whether you like them or not, he's been productive these past few months. And he's also just like, Democrat, like gas prices going down, the economy getting a little better is just really helping Democrats. And they've kind of hit their stride here. And they're, you know, they're, they have momentum, they have upward, you know, momentum, Obama did not. And that's really what happened in 2014. Now, that's the distinction we're making here. So let's go to 2012. Okay, because, you know, I just want to point out 2014 there. But let's actually let's start in 2010, because it's the beginning of the decade. So in 2010, the what happened was Republicans, like once we actually got like, Democrats held leads here and it kind of went back and forth well, but that's because we had very little polling. Once we started to get polling, it became clear that the Republicans are going to have a really, really good year. And again, like if you take a look at like really beginning of the summer, Republicans took the lead there. But what we saw was that on Labor Day, really nothing changed. Like what, September 6th, uh, 2010, Republicans had a 6.7 point lead. And then, you know, on election day, they had a 9.4 point lead. But again, uh, the, the polls actually overestimated Republicans by a fair bit in 2018. They won by 6.8. So again, Republicans did gain a little bit, but it's again, it was mostly because they just really started to hit their stride in October. It wasn't really Labor Day, really. What happened was uh, by the time October rolled around, Democrats had kind of collapsed and Republicans were really having a good time. So that's why they had such a good year. But Labor Day was pretty insignificant here. Again, Republicans held a polling lead in Labor Day, but it wasn't really different for what it was two weeks before, two weeks after. So 2010 does not pass the Labor Day test. So I put 2012. 2012 is very hard to, I, like, I'll be honest here, 2012 is really hard to take things away from because it was back and forth, like, literally, it's just back and forth, back and forth, totally fluctuated, to just totally just fluctuated all over the place. And so if we go to Labor Day here, or actually, I, I guess just do a play by play here, Democrats led in June, Republicans led in July and August, Democrats took the lead back in September. So I guess after Labor Day, Democrats did surge a little bit, but then they relinquished the lead the next month, Republicans took the lead back, Democrats took the lead back, then on election week, Republicans took the lead back. So it was literally just back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and like like i mean i guess the democrats gained two percent after labor day but as, as we can see it's, it's it didn't really matter much because it went back and forth so 2012 you can literally learn, like learning anything from the 2012 generic ballot polls is pretty hard to do so it didn't really pass the test either um and then lastly or not lastly but I, 2016 i think is is like the last example of like where this actually happened but it's really not that good of an example i'll explain why so People are going to say, oh, well, okay, let's, okay, guys, let's talk about Labor Day. So Labor Day 2016, right? And again, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the, I don't know why my thing just rearranged, but thanks, RCP. RCP always likes my computer, it's kind of annoying, but they're like, okay, well, on Labor Day, Democrats had a three and a half point lead. And then, you know, by election day, it was only half a point. So between Labor Day and election day, it was a three point swing towards the Republicans. And I'm like, right, but look at this chart nothing really changed between labor day and between the beginning of october democrats led by three and a half on labor day they led by uh, the first day of october they led by uh, three and a half so literally nothing changed between then what changed in october was democrats just collapsed in those final three weeks prior to the election because obviously the email investigation was reopened and hillary clinton went way down in the polls trump gained in the polls the republicans shot up in the polls and the Democratic Party had a really rough end of the 2016 campaign. They were riding pretty high for all of September and the first part of October. What happened 
was that they just everything went wrong for them in the final you know 17 20 days of that campaign and that's why they lost 2016 and so when people say oh well the polls the the gap narrowed between labor day 2016 and election day are just totally ignoring the fact that the gap really closed between october like it really started collapsing after october 19th and, and they never really recovered labor day was totally insignificant in this equation it was irrelevant so that's my 2016 rant. And then final, you know, our final midterm, or the most recent midterm uh, part of 2022, 2018, literally nothing came between Labor Day 2018 and uh, the uh, final polling. So on Labor Day 20, or on September 5th, 2018, I don't remember what Labor Day was in 2018, because it's, it's, it's uh, it, it, you know, it, I, I, I think it changes every year because it's the first Monday of September. But on September 5th, 2018, Democrats led by 8.4, they led by 8.6 on election day. So nothing changed between Labor Day 2018 and Election Day 2018. So that certainly does, 2018 is certainly not the Labor Day test. If you go to 2020, the exact same thing happens where Democrats on election, on Labor Day led by 7.3, and they led by 7.3 on the, the day before the election. So in 2018, nothing changed. In 2020, nothing changed. In 2016, things changed, but it wasn't Labor Day. It was actually a month after. In 2014, that was like the only good example of it happening, but 2014 is not even comparable to 2022 in really any way. In 2012, it was just constant fluctuation. And in 2010, it was like, you know, Republicans gained, but they were gaining for, you know, for a while. And Labor Day was just kind of in the middle of all their surges. So really what matters more than this arbitrary Labor Day deadline is momentum. And the Democratic Party right now has the momentum. As you can see, again, I'll pull out the 2022 polls. Uh, it went from a two and a half point Republican lead to a two point Republican lead to a one point Republican lead to a you know even generic ballot. Democrats took the lead beginning of August, and they have just been gaining really ever since. So um, if you're you know like if you're banking on Republicans just just because it's Labor Day, Republicans have to surge. It's not a great assumption to make because this is a unique midterm. First of all, because of the Dobbs decision, which threw it into complete chaos, and secondly. Uh, Unlike years past, I think both Democrats and Republicans are paying attention to politics, and so there's not that extra variable to try to discern. But whether you know whether one side's not paying attention, you know how it's going to work out. And so um, the fact that there are that a lot of people are just baking on oh because it's Labor Day things are going to change. It's just like it's an assumption that might have made sense a while ago, but now it has no context. It really has no meaning anymore. So the lesson for this video should be. The Labor Day bump is just, it's, it's kind of a myth. It doesn't really exist anymore. And uh, again, anyone who t t tells you that like they know where the polls would move within these next few weeks is, is probably, like there's no way of proving that. It's also very, um, like it is a very hard assumption to make. And unless you can give me like real facts and data to prove that there's going to be like this Labor Day surge for the GOP, I'm not going to buy into it because there's no reason for me to. And I, I don't think you guys should either. So um yeah, that's really it. I, I just wanted to talk with this because it's Labor Day. I didn't really have any video ideas. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching. I always enjoy doing poll analysis. Probably my favorite type of video, just talking about where I think the polls are going to be. But um, yeah, so thank you for watching. Subscribe, like, and I'll see you all next one. Bye, guys.